All right. Now let's spend a few minutes talking about absorbing Markov chains. So for this example, I want to give uh, a simple, I'm going to use kind of just a little motivating example, which is the uh, gambler's ruin. And it's a classic problem where you start off with some amount of money, and I'm going to do it for a very small case here. Um, and let's say that all that you're going to do is just going to play a betting game where you flip a coin. If it comes up heads, you win a dollar. If it comes up tails, you lose a dollar. All right. And what's going to happen is you're going to start off with some money. And if you hit zero, you go bankrupt and you're just done. And in this case, I'm going to keep it nice and simple and say, if you hit four dollars, actually, let's keep it really simple. Just say three dollars. If you hit three, three dollars then you walk away a winner and you say, okay, look at that. I tripled my money. I started with $1, end up with three. I'm walking away. All right. So the way to describe this is a Markov chain. And more importantly, it's going to be an absorbing Markov chain with two absorbing states. Either one, you go bankrupt or two, you win your three bucks. And we want to know what's the odds that you win $3 versus going bankrupt. All right. So the way to write the matrix, it's easy enough. We can say uh, x1, x0. Let's say you have 0, 1, 2, or $3. And then in the next state, you can have 0, 1, 2, or $3. If you're currently bankrupt, what are the odds that you're going to be bankrupt in the next state or in next period? 100%. Because once you go bankrupt, you're no longer playing. That's 1, 0, 0, 0. If you have $1, you're going to flip the coin once, and there's a one-half chance that you go down to zero, a one-half chance you go to two, and then there's a zero probability that you magically gain $2. Two is pretty straightforward. It's one-half, zero, one-half. Finally, at three, since we're walking away after three, we're no longer playing. This one is just zero, zero, one. All right? So this is an absorbing Markov chain with two absorption states. And these two, one and two, are called the transient states. All right. So we're interested in the long-term behavior. So if I start off in one, what's my odds of going to zero versus three? So how do we figure that out? Well, first of all, let's write out the matrix. All right which is one, zero, 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 one half, zero, one half, zero, uh, zero, one half, zero, one half, and then all zeros. Now, it turns out that the first thing that you wanna do when you're analyzing this type of absor absorbing Markov chain is to write it in canonical form. What is canonical form? Well, you wanna swap it, the, the states, so that the absorbing states are all in the bottom right. And you can see that while the three is, the zero, the bankrupt state, is in the top left. We want that in the bottom right with the three. So the way we do that is we can just shift this row down, and we got to keep it consistent on the other side too, right? You always want these in the same order, the row and the columns. So let's erase this and rewrite it. It's much easier to do on the computer, but, you know, I'll have to do this by hand. We go one, two, zero, three, one, two, zero, three. And then we got the zero, zero, zero. And then for one, you have a zero, one half, one half, zero, one half, zero, zero, one half. All right, you gotta sit there and think for one second. The odds of going from two to one is one half, and two to three is one half, and then zero percent chance of staying put or going to zero. All right. So now we have this in what we would call canonical form, where now you can see right here in the bottom are the absorbing states. That looks great. All right. Once you're in one of them, there's no chance of leaving. So you'll see this corner right here. There's no chance of leaving because this is saying that you start off at zero or three. Odds of going to one of these transient states of one or two, not happening. All right. Once you go bankrupt or you're one, you're done. And those are why these are absorbing states. Now, let's look at it. If we want to figure out the long run behavior, specifically one, which ones do we end up at? And secondly, we might also be interested in a question such as what is uh, 
how long does it take you to reach one? Well, let's, what we're going to do is we'll try multiplying these a few times, okay? We'll try, because, you know, as we know, we have to take our initial state, V naught, let's say, or actually I call X naught, is what I should say, X naught, and then we multiply by this matrix A, and that gives us X1. And so in theory here, if we do A, A, then, or A squared, which is X naught A squared, that gives us where we're going to be after two throws of the coin, right? After two periods, where are we going to be? So let's do that really fast. We got to multiply this matrix, which is a bit of a pain, but we'll manage. Zero, one half, zero, zero, one half, zero, 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 one half, zero, one, zero, zero, one half, zero, one. I could just do this on the computer, but I'm going to do it manually just this once. Well, actually, I'm going to do it twice. Half, zero, 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 one half, zero, one, zero, zero, one half, zero, zero. All right, let's see here. There's a lot of stuff to multiply here, but we'll be able to shorten it a little bit after the first time. So that's zero, one quarter, zero, 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 one half, zero. Zero 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 uh, one quarter zero 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 uh let's see here one half wait uh I made a mistake someplace already I think I did this one's yeah that one's good sorry oh yeah one quarter zero 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 all right, that looks good actually. And uh, zero, 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 zero. Good. And then this one, these should be very straightforward. That's all zero. That's all zero. All uh, that's a one, and then a zero. And then similarly, we should see zero, zero, zero. And then of course, this should be a one right there. I had a typo. Don't worry, that didn't affect anything else. Did it? I should wait up a second here. <laughs> Let me double check these one more time now. Now that I realize I made a mistake there. Let's see here. One quarter, zero, zero, zero. Zero, 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 one half. That's an important thing, actually. It was a good thing I redid it. And then finally right here, sorry. So that's uh, going to be a one right there and then all zero. I'm pretty sure that's right. You can, uh, you know what though? One second here. I think this thing also has to change, right? Zero, zero, zero. Well, I guess not. There we go. Is that true? That can't be true. That has to be one quarter. Oh, I'm sorry. Zero, one quarter. That's why. I just can't do math. There we go. All right. Sorry about that. A few mix-ups. That's what happens when you're multiplying four by four matrices, but we got it. And this should match up pretty closely to your intuition, right? So let's just remember what this is saying. Uh, hopefully this does show up there, right? Yeah, you can see it. Let's see here. Let's just quickly write this really fast just to remind ourselves what this means physically. If Remember, this is our X naught. And this is 1, 2, 0, 3. And this is x2, 1, 2, 0, 3. So after two flips, what's going to happen is that there's uh, a one half chance on the first time we go straight bankrupt. The other half of the time, we're going to have $2. And then we flip again. And then now half of those times, so a, quarter, a total of one quarter of the time, we end up making our three bucks. And the other quarter of the time, we drop back down to $1. And then for the two, it's kind of the opposite. If you start off with $2, there's a one half chance we immediately win and walk away. One half of the time, we go down to one, and then we flip again, and we either go back or we go bankrupt. And then down here, if we start off bankrupt, we stay bankrupt. And if we start off winning, we walked away winning still. All right? That's all this is saying. Let's do it one more time. 
let's get it to, from X0 to X3, and we should see a, a pretty strong path. All right, X3. Uh, we do the math here, and I, I'll actually start just filling it in from memory here. So first things first, we can fill in the bottom here, right? That's the beauty of the absorbing states here. We had 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. We ain't going anywhere. If we started in one of the two absorbing states, we're going to stay there and we ain't going anywhere else, right? Now, then, with these, we already know that these numbers are kind of already baked in, right? After the first two flips, there's already a 50% chance we've gone to zero, 50% chance of one, uh, of we've won for this one, and, and you know, 50% of that, one quarter of chance of having one, and one quarter chance of losing, and one half chance of already won, winning if we start off there. But the only thing that's still in the game are these. After two coin flips, there's still one in four chance we're still at one, and one in four chance that if we start at two, we're still at two. Those are the only things that are still moving pieces. And you can confirm this by doing the multiplication. Out of this, one half of the time of this one quarter, we're going to be moving up. So that's going to be one eighth. The other half of the time, we're going to be going bankrupt. So that one's going to add one eighth onto that. So we should have five eighths on there. Five eighths, and that's still going to be one quarter. And then right here, similarly, there's a one in eight chance we'll be there. Zero, one quarter, five eighths. If you need to, you don't believe me, do the multiplication, multiply this by this matrix one more time, and you will see we'll get this. And because it makes intuitive sense in that if we start off with one, after two coin flips, we, this stuff has happened, and that stuff's still going to have happened. But there's a one in four chance we're still in a transient state where our fate has not yet been decided. And in that case, we're going to flip the coin again. And then now we have a one eighth chance of being right here, and we've added another eighth chance of being right there. All right, and there we go. Now, in general, what we can do is we can split this matrix up into four sections. All right, and what we call them are the transient section, Q, zero section, because this is the probability of going from one of the absorbing states into a transient, which is just always zero by definition. Then we have the odds of staying in the same absorbing state that you started in, which is always one. So that's identity matrix. And then right here, this one is the absorbing subsection, right? Which we're going to call R. And so we have our matrix in general right here, this matrix. We can split it up and call it Q, R, 0, and I, four sections. Now, they aren't all the same size, right? This size right here, the transient is however many transient states you have, which could have been if our, we had set our maximum dollar at $4, then we would have had three of these, right? Zero and four would be our absorbing, and one, two, and three would be our transient. And this would be a three by three section, and then it would be a three by two, a two by three, and a two by two. Right, and where this one is the number of absorbing states you have. All right. So if we call this our initial matrix A, what we'll see here is that we can multiply it and it works out the exact same. And we'll actually show this a couple of times just quickly doing the math, right? Where if you multiply these two together, uh, where you multiply, if you square it, let's say, so we have, so we've just relabeled different subsections. Yes, you can do this with matrices. You can label different subsections. So this is a matrix right here of 0, 1 half, 1 half, 0. This is the R. This is the 0 of these four zeros. And this is the I. And now let's do the do this thing squared, right? So we take Q, R, 0, I. And it, and it looks exactly the same. You just have to remember that ultimately these are matrices we're talking about. And so what we get is Q times Q plus 0 times R, and that, or R times 0, and that's just 0. So you get Q squared. I should not write this that. For this one, we get Q times R plus R times I, and R times the identity matrix is just R. So we get QR plus R. And then we have 0 plus 0, which is 0. And then 0 plus identity matrix times itself is just I. So not a surprise here. What we have 
is kind of cool. First, we have this section multiplied by itself, which once again, we can double check. One half, zero, zero, one half. Oh, I have those mixed up. Zero, one half, zero, one half, zero, times zero, one half, zero, one half. Uh, oops. I'll eventually write one of this, right? All right. And then we get, what is this? Zero, one quarter, zero, 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 one quarter, zero. Right? And so sure enough, that was what we got right here. You can see Q times Q will give us this right here, right? This is, a, this is the idea of, this is the part of the matrix where you started off in a transient, and then you ended up in the transient. And you see it's starting to get smaller and smaller each time because you're multiplying these things by half and everything, every time, right? Then over here, this also makes sense. Check this one out. This one, what we see is, is that it's R, which was just this. So this is going to be the probability that in the first flip, we went from 1 to 0, or 1 to 3, or 2 to 0, or 2 to 3, right? So in the first flip, we went to one of the absorbing states, right? And that stuff is already baked in, right? We said that was baked in. Every time, we're just adding more probability into that section, because each time, there's less of a chance that we're staying in this transient section, and the odds are going up that we'll eventually go in there, right? So we have to add in, maybe on the first flip, we stayed in the transient. And the second flip, we transitioned. And that's what's happening there. And so that's why we have first Q and then times R. And so that's why we're adding in the one quarters into there. Because first we multiplied by, first we had our Q, and then we multiplied by the R section. And that's the odds that we first stayed in the transient with the first flip and the second flip transitioned into an absorbing state. And so that's just first flip end, and this is the second flip ending, ending on the second flip. All right, and then of course down here, as we said, this stuff always stays the same, that stuff's always the same, no matter how many flips we go, right? And so now if we go for a third flip, and after three, I'll stop. So this is after two flips. And now we multiply one more time, Q, R, zero, I. And now we get Q cubed, that's nothing, right? And then we get Q squared R plus this thing, which is gonna be Q squared R plus Q R plus R. And then we have zero, and then we have I. So after three flips, Remember now, this is going from x0 to x3, uh, I believe, right? Yeah, this is after three flips, right? We could either, one, we can go inside this transient thing three times, which means that we kind of flip from one to two, and then from two to one, and then one to two again. Right? And I believe that's all going to be like one-eighth there, which is, I believe, what we had. You can flip back to what we had when we had that third one there. I believe it was the one eighth there. And then you have the probability that you transitioned in the first one after the first flip, the second flip, or that you stunk, stuck around going the uh, going transitioning twice, and then you went down on the third flip is when you went down into one of the absorbing states. And in general, we can write out that uh, that this term right here, as we go off to a to the n power, or a towards the infinity, well, actually, let's do that. Let's say limit as n goes to infinity, what's going to happen? Well, each time we see that staying in this transient state, well, it's transient. Eventually, you're going to end up falling in. After maybe the eighth flip or the hundredth flip, eventually, you're going down into an absorbing state. So as you keep going and going, First of all, q to the k uh, limit as k goes to infinity will be zero, right? After long enough, you're not going to be in here anymore, right? If we were to make the matrix x, 0, 1, 2, 0, 3, and then 1, 2, 0, 3, and this is, you know, x, 1 million, right? Essentially, the odds of being still 
at one or two dollars is essentially zero, right? You're not, if you start off with one or two dollars, you're not after a million flips still going to be at one or two. You're eventually going to hit zero or three, right? And this right here is the thing we're really interested in. If you flip a million times, what are the odds that you end up at zero versus ending up at three? If you start at one dollar, if you start off at two dollars, what are the odds of ending up at zero or three? So this is the thing that we're really interested in, right? And what we see here is that this thing zero, this thing zero, this thing is going to be I, and this thing right here is going to be this weird summation, right? Which we're going to label B. All right. So we just need to calculate what B is, and that'll tell us when we, if we can calculate it, we can just get that, and then we can say if we start off at one. Which absorbing states are we going to with which probability? And start for two, which absorbing states with what probability? So that's why we want to calculate it. All right. So let's quickly write it out. I've just erased it, but I'll know it from memory. B is equal to, I'm going to quickly, I'm just going to reverse the order of it. That way it can expand. You get QB, uh, sorry, QR. Huh. Playing too much fantasy football. Q squared R plus Q cubed r plus dot 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 right if we go off n times towards infinity this is what we have how on earth do we solve this well this is a sum an infinite sum where the thing that's taking to the power is going towards zero so it turns out that the derivation for this is almost the same almost identical to something like one half plus one half squared plus one half cubed plus dot 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 the derivation is almost identical, but with matrices. That's kind of cool to see. So now QB, quarterback, is, what's that? So we're going to take this B and we're going to multiply the front of it by Q. And we can do the distributive property. So this whole thing times Q is going to be QR plus Q squared R plus Q cubed R plus Q to the fourth R plus dot, dot, dot. What's B minus QB? Well, these cancel, these cancel, these cancel, those cancel, and they all cancel, except at the end, you're gonna have some Q to the infinity R, but Q to the infinity R, the limit there, that's going to zero. So that extra term is zero. So all the infinite sums, that all cancels out, and all you're left with is the R, right? In theory here, you would have a minus Q to the N times R, but because Q to the N, as we go off towards infinity, is zero, you get the zero times R, and that just doesn't matter. All right, it's getting infinitesimally small. So now you have this. You can pull out the B. You gotta be a little bit careful here. This isn't a one. Technically, there's an implicit I, because we're dealing with matrices. So instead of one, we have I. So now we get I minus Q equals R. And now, if we were going to be doing this using the uh, the infinite sums with standard real numbers, we would divide here. But we don't divide with matrices. We have to multiply by the inverse, right? Just like how, you know, if you have one half, you multiply by two, and that gets you one. You have to multiply by the inverse to make this thing one instead of dividing. All right, so you get B, I minus Q, I minus Q, negative one. This is the inverse has to be equal to R times I minus Q inverse. And once again, because order matters, we're multiplying on the afterwards in this case, in both cases. We can't do I minus Q to the negative one times R here. We can't swap, you know, this one can't be in front and this one to come after. They either both come after or they both come in the front of everything. Because you can't switch the order. And because we want to cancel with this one, we don't do the I minus Q to the minus one here because that'll be I minus I minus Q to the negative uh, inverse times B times I minus Q, and that they don't cancel out. There. So we have to put it at the end. All right, and now these cancel, and now we just get that B is equal to R times I minus Q inverse. Phew. All right, there was that derivation. That was cool. All right, so now if we wanted to, all we would have to do is you just have to take the inverse of a matrix, which is not actually that pleasant of an operation. That one actually is a bit of a painful thing. They're always trying to come up with better ways to 
take the inverse of matrices, but you can do it. Typically they do some pseudo inverse, but you can easily take this and you can get your B and that'll tell you your absorption probabilities. I'm not gonna do it right now. We'll probably do it in class if you want, or you can try doing it on your own. Take this matrix, take I minus uh, this Q right here, right? So you take this section right here, take the inverse and then take R and then multiply by that inverse and you should get the absorption probabilities, all right? Now, this I minus Q inverse is actually kind of interesting. This is called the fundamental matrix. And not surprisingly, this is equal to the sum of Q to the K from K equals zero to infinity. Right, and we could see that just because that was that infinite sum with all those Qs and there was just an R in it. That was our equation for B, I already erased it. But it was just this uh, R, uh, QR, Q squared R, Q cubed R, right? So you factor out the R and then you get just this, right? So, so we have that and it turns out that this has a really cool property, which is that N times one gives you the expected number, expected number of flips, or let me actually do it more general term and then I'll talk about it in this case. Expected number of uh, periods before being absorbed. All right, and you can actually see this. This actually makes a lot of sense because the idea is this, right? And uh, get, given uh, whatever state you started in. Um, so to see that, let's take a look at this, right? What are the odds that you are not yet absorbed after one flip, right? Let's assume that you start off at one here. Well, it's just one half, right? It's just the total probability that you're still in one of these two, right? So it's one half. Then it's gonna be, now what you have to do is you have to look at the second period, right? And we have to look at this chunk right here. And we're gonna see it's one fourth and zero, right? If you go back to when we had that matrix up, there's going to be plus the one fourth, plus the one eighth, plus whatever, right? And so what's going to happen is that for every term we're still in it, we got to add that on. So in total, it takes, in this case, on average one. But the way to think about this is that, okay, um, half the time we get one point, right? Because we've lasted one turn without, die, without being absorbed, winning or losing. And then one quarter of the time, we're going to get another point because we survived for the second term. And then uh, an eighth of the time, we get a third point. So it's just one, this plus this plus this, right? We just keep adding them up. And that'll give us the total, on average, number of points that we're going to be staying. All right? So that's really cool. And you can see right here, though, that if all that we're interested in is this section right here, for the case of when we start off at one, well, that's gonna be the top part of Q, right? Plus the top part of Q squared, plus the top part of Q cubed, and so on and so forth. And in general, if we wanna know the expected number of periods before being absorbed for all of the different states, right? Then what we're interested in is all of Q plus all of Q squared, plus all of Q cubed, and so on and so forth. So we have to sum them up. And that's why this fundamental matrix is what, since that's the sum of all these transient states, that's gonna give us the number of periods we're in the transient states before we transition into the absorption states. All right, so that's all I wanna go over today. We'll actually go through, if you like, during class, we we'll actually put this example up and actually plug in these values and see what we get, all right? But I'm not gonna do it right now, all right? So with that, I'll see you guys in class.